Today in pre-cal we learned about how to use the properties of logarithms. This makes solving them with and without the calculator much easier. The first thing that we want to learn about is the change of base formula. And the reason that the change of base formula is so useful is it does make it where we can use the calculator. So, um, I'm not going to have you write out all the details, but if A, B, and X are positive, so A, B, and X are all greater than zero, and they're all real numbers, A does not equal one, and B does not equal one. So those are the details of that. Then the log can be changed to a different base as follows. So if you want to go to a base of B. Okay, so that's just any number that you would want to go to. Then the log base A of X equals the log base B of X over the log base B of A. And that's just a general formula. If you wanted to go to a base of 10, the reason that that would be helpful is because then you can use a calculator. So the log base A of X equals the log of X over the log of A. And so you would take the big number goes on top, the little number goes on bottom, the log of each using the calculator, and that would give you the same answer as this would. And finally, if you wanted to change to base E, so you could use the natural log, then the log base A of X would be the natural log of X over the natural log of A. And those three formulas will be very helpful for you to use the calculator. Let's look at a few examples. Number one. If I want to find the log base 4 of 25, I don't know any properties about 4 raising to any power that will get me to 25, so that's not easy to do. Instead, I'd like to change the base. So I'm going to go to base 10, so I can use a calculator. So I'm going to do the log of 25 over the log of 4. And then I can put that in my calculator. Log of 25 divided by log of 4. And I get my answer, which is... 2.322. Sorry, I lost my camera there for a second. Let me get you back in view. Alright, so that's the change of base formula. Let's do a few more like that. If I do, example 2, the log base 2 of 12. I can do the log of 12 over the log of 2, and I plug that into my calculator. My answer is 3.585. You might notice that if I did the natural log, so let's do another example, it would give me the same thing. If I still was trying to find the log base 4 of 25, like in example 1, and instead of doing log base 10, I now chose to use the natural log. The natural log of 25 over the natural log of 4. Do that on my calculator. I still get 2.322. So it doesn't matter what I change my base to, as long as I use the change of base formula, I'm still going to get a the same answer. Let me point out here that when you do the log of 12 over the log of 2, that's not the same as doing the log of 6. So you cannot reduce those. Those are put. To, those are together. You cannot separate them. Okay. The next thing we want to talk about, besides change of base, is the properties of logarithms. And all the same rules from up here apply. So I'm not going to rewrite those. The first property is called the product property, and that is that the log base a of u v is the same as the log base a of u plus the log base A of V. Notice we go from multiplying to adding here. The next property, property number two, is the quotient property. Remember the word quotient means divide. So the log base A of U over V, it's important that you realize that V obviously can't be zero, is the log base A of U minus the log base A of V. Okay. Um, all of these apply the natural log as well. I'm not going to double write those. The third property is the power property. And that is that the log base A of U to the nth power is the same as bringing that N down in front. So it's N 
of log base A of U. Let's look at some problems with and without the calculator. So first, let's do some with the calculator. If I do the log base 5 of the cube root of 5, right? Okay, this doesn't have multiplying or dividing, but it does have a power. Let's rewrite that power as log base 5 of 5 to the 1 third, okay? Because that's the same thing as the cube root is to the 1 third. Remember, I can bring powers out front because of the power property, so I have 1 third log of log base 5 of 5. And remember, log base 5 of 5 just cancels each other from a property we learned yesterday, or that all equals 1. So 1 third times 1 is 1 third. And that's my answer there. So simple number 5. The natural log of e to the b power, I'm sorry, to the 6th, natural log of e to the 6, and it's the natural log of e squared. Remember I can bring the 6 down front, so I have the natural log of e, minus, bring the 2 down front, natural log of e, natural log and e cancel each other, so I have 6 minus 2, which is 4. Finally, that's, that's to find the exact solution without the calculator. To find the expanded notation using these properties is the next thing we want to look at. We do example 6. If I want to find the log base 4 of 5x cubed y, and I want to expand that, okay? If I want to find that, then I am going to notice that these things are being multiplied. This one has a power. So I'm going to start by adding them together because of the product property. So I have the log base 4 of 5 plus the log base 4 of x cubed, plus the log base 4 of y. The only other thing I can do is take this power and bring it out front, which is the log base 4 of 5, plus 3 log base 4 of x, plus log base 4 of y. And that would be the expanded form of that one. We have two more examples to look at here. Example number 7 is the natural log of the square root of 3x minus 5 over 7. And I should notice here that I have something being divided and something to a power. Let me rewrite the top as a power first. So that's to the 1 half power over 7. Now something's being divided, they're being, then I subtract. So I have that is equal to the natural log of 3x minus 5, all to the 1 half minus the natural log of 7. And the last thing I can do is bring the 1 half out front. So I have 1 half natural log of 3x minus 5. This piece cannot be separated because it's an argument, plus we don't have any rules about subtracting, minus the natural log of 7. And now that one has been expanded. Let's do one more of expanding to make sure you've got all of this. The log base 2 of negative 8. Okay. If I use my change of base formula, I would do the log of negative 8 over the log of 2, and you're going to get undefined. The reason I wanted to show you this one more time, is that it does not exist, is to remind you that you can't take a negative log or a negative natural log. Okay, so that was the end of those notes for today. The assignment is A5, I'm sorry, A6, and that is page 243. And you're going to do 10 through 70, and you're going to do every other even problem. So that would be like 10, 14, 18, 22, 26, 30, on and on and on. It really doesn't amount to too many problems. I just wanted to give you quite a variety so that you could be sure that you'd get lots of practice. Let me know if you have questions.